So the computer will analyze the scans and start to orient the models to each other. This is done automatically in this version of the software. Actually, a lot is completed automatically in this version of the software. The model axis is completed and the margin is traced automatically. In previous versions of the software, all of this had to be completed manually. Now it is all automatic. Now that being said, I personally recommend that you go back and you double check the margin tracing and make any necessary adjustments as needed. The software is not perfect and often makes mistakes on the margin. I also like to check the model axis as well, verifying its accuracy. Despite the software automatically doing this for us, we are going to go back a couple of steps and check those steps and make any necessary adjustments as needed. First, I will check the model axis. On the bottom step bar, find the model axis and click on it to activate that step. In the upper left portion of the screen is a box that contains a frontal view of the model. In the lower left portion of the screen is a box that contains a side view of the model. And in the center of the screen is a view that contains the overhead view of the model. To the right of the screen, you will see options for a tools menu, display objects menu, and analyzing tools menu. Some people like to set the model axis using the upper jaw, but I personally like to use the lower jaw, especially when I am working on the lower arch. If I am working on the upper anterior teeth, then I will use the upper jaw to set the model axis, but normally I use the lower jaw. I like the lower jaw because if you think back to dental school when you learned about the curve of speed and the curve of Wilson, the curve of speed is viewed from the side and can be best visualized by looking at the box in the lower left of the screen. The curve of speed represents the curvature of the mandibular occlusal plane starting at the premolar and following the buccal cusps of the posterior teeth. The curve of Wilson is viewed from the front so it can be seen in the box in the upper left of the screen. This curve contacts the buccal and lingual cusps of the molars. So I like to start setting the model axis by working on the overhead view of the model in the center of the screen. You can see your digital scan overlaying an arch template. If you look closely at this template drawing, you will see that on each side of the arch there are distinct areas where the molar should lie where the premolar should lie and where the anterior teeth to include the incisors and canines should lie. You will also notice a line that annotates the midline as well. The midline is especially helpful when working in the anterior. So if you click on the left button of the trackpad, you can rotate the models on the axis. If you click on the right button of the trackpad, you can move the entire model as one unit on the screen. Use the trackpad to position the model in the area that it should be within the arch tracing. I try to make sure that the teeth are positioned in the center of the designated areas in the tracing. So using the information we said earlier about the curve of speed and curve of Wilson, I will move the model within each box on the left side of the screen to set what I think fits best for the curve of speed and the curve of Wilson. Setting the model axis is a critical step if you are using the virtual articulator with your case. Once I have all three angles or views of the model set, I'm ready to click OK at the bottom of the screen and progress to the next step. Truthfully, based on what I initially saw, we could have likely just left this alone based on the auto adjustments and would have been just fine. Trimming the model used to be an optional step and on my screen it actually goes ahead and completes that step. If I choose not to trim the model, the next step is to draw the margin. Go ahead and click on the draw margin icon at the bottom of the screen in the step bar. Now before we mess with the margin, I just want to take a second and show you another feature of the trackball mouse. If you left click, you will be able to rotate the model around an axis. If you right click, you will be able to move the entire model around the screen. If you click the middle button and rotate the trackball, you will be able to zoom in closer to the model or zoom out away from the model. When drawing the margin, I like to zoom in a little closer to the prep so I can better visualize the model. 
On the right side of the screen, you will see a menu that says Tools. Within this menu, you have two options for drawing the margin. Auto, which is listed as Magnetic, and a Manual option. The system defaults to Auto, and that is the option I choose 100% of the time. However, you can turn this off in the system parameters if you like, and always manually draw your margins. When I draw the margin, the system will auto detect the margin, but I find it always makes some little errors that I have to go back and manually fix anyway. Since the margin is already drawn with this version of the software, I'm going to check it and basically see if there's any adjustments that need to be made. And in this case, we do need to make some adjustments. I like to rotate the model and look at the margin tracing from different angles. Look for any places where the margin may have dropped off, moving down the side of the tooth, or where the tracing may have created peaks or sharp transitions. If you need to fix any area, start on the left or right of the area that needs fixed and do a double left click on the line. Trace over the area that needs fixed, doing small left clicks along the way if needed. Lock off the adjustment with a double left click. Another thing you can do here is turn the stone model display off if it is active and you can rotate your digital impression upside down. What does this look like when you view the margin from underneath the impression? Well, if you set a PBS or a traditional impression, you are correct. It may help some people to view the digital impression in this way until you get the hang of the software. Once you have the margin traced and you are happy with the way it looks, you are ready to move on. Now on my screen, the next two steps are appearing as completed, telling me that they are optional. One of those completed steps is the insertion axis. The software in my case has already predetermined the insertion axis. It's not a bad idea though to check this. This represents the milling axis as well. When looking at the insertion axis, make sure you do not see any yellow color on your finish lines. It is okay if you see some yellow on an axial wall because it means that it is taking into consideration an undercut. On the margin, however, if you see yellow, this could cause over milling of the margin, causing it to chip, or could prevent the restoration from fully seating. If you see this, you may need to go back and check your margin tracing, or in some cases, fix the margin in the mouth and rescan. The other completed step is the preparation analysis. This gives me an option to visualize my reduction. You can see by looking at the prep that the finish line around the tooth is green. If you look at the color indicator in the top left of the screen, you can see that the green color we see on the finish line is equal to four millimeters or greater from the opposing tooth. On the occlusal part of the prep, we see a dark blue color that indicates we are between 0.5 to greater than one millimeter from the opposing. If you look in the lower left of the screen, you will see a little box that says measured value. When you hover the cursor over various colored areas of the prep, you will see the measured distance of the reduction from the opposing tooth. So this is a good way to analyze your prep to check your reductions using the software. If you see an issue of being under-reduced here or in the next phase, the design phase, when we do the crown proposal, you may decide to go back to the mouth to readjust the prep and then rescan the prep to give yourself more interocclusal distance for adequate thickness of material. So use these tools to help analyze your preparation. Some other tools on this phase are within the analyzing tools menu found on the right side of the screen. When we first look at preparation analysis, we are viewing the distance to the antagonist. We can also analyze the undercuts, the quality of the preparation margin, and the quality of the surface of the preparation. For what is worth, use these tools to better understand your prep, and if any changes to the prep could be beneficial. All right, so if everything looks good up until this point, then go ahead and click the right arrow on the bottom of the screen below the step bar to advance the process forward. You can also click the design phase button at the top of the screen.